But if you compare World at War to COD World War II, the differences are instantly noticeable. What is up everybody, Chaos here. Today, we are going to be checking out 10 things that Call of Duty did in the past that you will never ever see again. Some of these are good, some of these are bad. This is probably going to be a fan favorite where you guys thumbs it up and say we want this back. And I don't blame you. Wager matches. Let's get the obvious one out of the way early. Wager matches are a feature that only appeared in one Call of Duty game the original Black Ops, and they were loved by the community. In these party modes, you had to fork up some of your in-game currency to start, and then the top three players of the match would get paid out at the end, and then you could use that currency to buy camos, attachments, weapons, stuff like that. This was back when the progression system was a little different and less linear. By grinding wager matches, you could theoretically unlock all the high-level stuff in the game while you were only a low rank, and aside from that, it was just, it was fun. It was fun to play these high stakes party games. It's one thing to play gun game or one in the chamber when people are just messing around, but it's a whole different beast playing those modes when there were actual stakes involved and people are sweating like crazy. Unfortunately, wager matches are probably never going to be coming back because not only did COD abandon this point system for the custom classes, but there has also been a ton of controversy in the last few years surrounding gambling and video games. I mean, do you really think Activision is going to release a Call of Duty game in 2019 where there is literally a mode called wager matches? No way, no how. If you ask me, wager matches are gone forever. Next up is spin-off games. Does anybody remember these? I've talked a little about these in my history of Call of Duty, and they're definitely something Activision used to put a lot of funding into. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Call of Duty used to have additional games to the main series, and these were meant to try to entice people on the older consoles into upgrading and getting in the main series. For example, when COD 2 was released for the Xbox 360, Big Red 1 was released for the Xbox, the PS2, and the GameCube. When World at War was released for the seventh console generation, World at War Final Fronts was released on the sixth console generation. There's quite a few of these weird spin-off games, and most of them were pretty lackluster since they were just basically advertisements for the main series. But Activision hasn't made one in a long, long time. The last time they did was back at the beginning of the seventh console generation, and they have since walked away from the practice, which I personally think is a good thing. Call of Duty is such a massive brand now, there's really no need to do these weird game advertisements like this anymore. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on so you always get alerted when a new video goes up and you can get that elusive first comment. Here's one thing you'll probably not see for a long, long time, if ever again, a gritty World War II setting. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, Jimmy, we just had a World War II game, and I know, but I said gritty, okay? For those of you who have only played COD World War II but never played World at War or COD II, you probably don't know what I mean by this. Back when COD was first getting on its feet, Activision pretty much gave anything the green light in terms of graphic content and portraying the Second World War with authenticity. This was highlighted with World at War, which is still one of the most graphic World War II games ever made. But if you compare World at War to COD World War II, the differences are instantly noticeable. Sure, COD World War II looks better, but it's also a much more tame game in the, in the violence category. Sure, it may be more polished, but World at War was more gritty and realistic. Then we had the whole controversy regarding Activision removing the swastikas from COD World War II, when you could go back to the original COD games from the early 2000s and you'll see them everywhere. My point is, COD is just too big to accurately portray the Second World War anymore without offending people or getting mainstream backlash. And that is not a risk that Activision is going to take anymore. That's the same reason why World at War will never be remastered. At number seven, Universal Forced Game Chat. Forced Game Chat was a beautiful thing. Most people associate it with Search and Destroy, but if you think back to the older COD games, there were way more games with this feature. For those that don't know, Force Game Chat was a system in which certain game modes would only let you in if you were not in a party, meaning you had to talk to the other people in the game. This was mainly made for communication and objective-based modes, but it quickly became ground zero for some good old-fashioned trash talk. Force Game Chat used to be present 
in a ton of different game modes, but in the last few years, we're lucky to get it in even one. But with the climate of AAA games constantly trying to fight harassment, whatever that means, I seriously doubt we're ever going to get forced game chat for more than just one or two modes in the future. COD has a reputation for being toxic and full of trash talkers, which I don't consider, I don't really consider it to be a bad thing, but whatever. Activision will do all they can to suppress that for the sake of the big name investors. Next up, Infinite Warfare or Infinite Warfare 2. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to see Infinite Warfare again, but let me blow your mind for a second. During interviews leading up to the release of IW, certain Infinity Ward employees stated they were hoping to make Infinite Warfare a new franchise. They wanted IW to be the new MW or Black Ops. Now, obviously, this probably sounds like the worst idea in the world to many of you listening, but fear not. After Infinite Warfare so drastically underperformed, there was next to no chance that this subseries would ever be revisited. And I think pretty much all the COD sub franchises have a chance of being continued in the future, but with such a bad rep and such low sales, I'm willing to bet money there will never be an Infinite Warfare 2. Cracking into the top five, game-changing variants. Microtransactions are starting to get watched very closely by various groups and governments. There have been even bills passed to try and outlaw and pay to win mechanics in video games, which I think it's a good call. But what does this mean for the days of game-changing weapon variants? They're probably over. This practice started in Advanced Warfare and it was brought back in Infinite Warfare and both systems were widely hated by the community for their shady RNG mechanics and the fact that they gave one player a statistical advantage over another player just because they spent money and got lucky. Now with how much the world is cracking down on pay to win mechanics, Activision is likely going to want to keep their big name franchise away from legal controversy as much as possible, which means it's very likely we're never going to get game-changing variants again and possibly supply drop weapons as well. But I think I'll... I, I think those will stick around a little longer than the variants because it's a little harder to definitively prove a supply drop weapon is pay to win. Two year gaps. Back when Call of Duty first started, it wasn't that big. It wasn't a yearly franchise that we know today. There used to be only one developer and then eventually it was two until 2011 it became three. And with the recent drama going on, I don't really know how many mainline COD developers we have anymore. But the big thing is that used to change with time because between games, they had time to do stuff. COD wasn't a yearly game back in the early days. COD 1 was released in 2003. Then there was a nice two-year gap before COD 2. But that was when Treyarch was hired and COD became a yearly franchise. And I will bet you anything that Call of Duty will never step away from this yearly model. Activision will always have the funding to bring in new developers if they have to. And the revenue stream is too great for them to slow it down. New devs will keep bringing stuff in and the current ones will be worked really hard to make sure there is a new COD game every 12 months. The days of two-year gaps between COD games, well, for better or worse, they're over. At number three, Gesture Warfare. Now, honestly, this was pretty fun. It was a goofy party mode that was helping people ease back into Infinite Warfare. The game got a lot of flack for its excessive microtransactions and random gestures that nobody really saw the point of other than padding supply drops. Then, Infinity Ward decided to just say screw it, and they made a joke mode that was free for all, but with gestures as your weapons, essentially just making fun of themselves and joking around about how ridiculous the game had gotten by that point. Believe it or not, Gesture Warfare was actually really fun. It ended up sticking around for more than just the weekend it was supposed to be featured in. But with how much mainstream world is cracking down on microtransactions, something tells me we're not going to be seeing a bunch of gestures in Call of Duty again, which means no more Gesture Warfare, although some of you probably think that's a good thing anyway. At number two, a disabled DLC button. Does anybody remember back in Modern Warfare 3 when there was this handy little button that made life so easy? Hey, DLC is such a massive part of Call of Duty, but honestly, I'm, I'm excited to see it go away. Modern Warfare is going to be taking steps forward for the series by eliminating paid map packs post-launch. So obviously, there won't be a disabled DLC button since the new maps will just be part of the permanent rotation. But there's a little bit of uncertainty over whether or not the season passes will make a return for COD 2020 and beyond. If they do come back, I still don't think this button will ever return. I mean, just look at Black Ops 4. BO4 literally gives you a pop-up telling you that you're missing certain maps and tells you to go buy them. And while Treyarch even got backlash because they turned on a feature that would put an icon next to your name in the lobby if you didn't have the DLC installed so everybody could see it, Call of Duty is extremely aggressive with DLC microtransactions right now. 
Back in the Modern Warfare 3 days, people would buy the season pass because they liked the game, and the developers would let you disable the DLC matchmaking if you just wanted to play the base maps. But now, no. It's almost like Activision expects you to pay for the DLC, and they can't imagine a world where you don't give them the money for it. Now, I'm glad paid DLC is going away this year, and I hope that it stays out of Call of Duty forever. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on so you always get alerted when a new video goes up and you can get that elusive first comment. And at number one today, free to play. Now I know free to play is something that COD has dabbled in, but as for fully free to play models, I'm not buying it. I'm not, especially not with all the Modern Warfare hype. Many companies are going for a more consumer friendly business model. While I think Activision is starting to catch up to that a little bit, I just don't see him going free to play. Despite how much people criticize it, COD makes an absurd amount of money on launch day every single year, and Activision isn't going to stop doing that just because other companies are doing something else. A while back, there were rumors the series would go free to play, especially after the free to play weeks for Black Ops 4 and Blackout, but looking at the money stream every year and also looking at how hyped people are for Modern Warfare despite Infinity Ward's last two games being lackluster should tell you something. It's not gonna change. They will keep selling COD for 60 bucks the same way EA keeps selling Madden and FIFA for $60. As long as people are buying it, well, they're going to keep making it. There you go. Those are 10 things that you will probably never see in Call of Duty again. Like I said, some good, some bad. You guys let me know something else that we'll probably never see again that you want back in the game. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like. I'll see you soon.